<laughs> okay, just for shits and giggles, please. I'd like to try this at bar 21. Everyone put a quarter note rest. Just pencil it for now. Where? At bar 21, which is one before letter B. Right. Okay. Where in the bar? Anywhere? So I don't, I don't, let's just try it, just stop. Like it's, the band is caught by surprise when he says dress. It's not like pull it out of time, man. Huh? I just bring it back in with a little jump fill. Complicated, man. It's com <laughs> let's do it this way first. Maybe that's a good idea. Could have done that's, I like that idea. <laughs> I do. Okay. So let's get this. So <laughs> let me just see if this works where, where it's, it's going. a good idea, Bobby, for your old band. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Save it for your CD. <laughs> <laughs> like Whitney. Like Whitney. That, that was me in 1979. I played the trumpet, flugelhorn, uh, 22 years before that, as my dad, with Miles Davis, conducted by Gil Evans, for the Miles Ahead uh, recording. I'd have my dad bring me to uh, a lot of recording sessions. He was a very busy New York studio musician. When it was... Um, he was doing the Tony Awards. I'd go to rehearsals, and I knew I always liked horns, and I enjoyed the recording process, and I said, this is, this is what I want to do. I know he performed with Judy Garland, with uh, Peggy Lee, with um, Sinatra, and Tony Bennett. But because of being a New York musician, not that he was out on the road with them, but when they would come to New York to record, my dad was always first call. So if they needed trombone, or bass trombone, which is what he played, um, he'd get the call. So he worked with his discography, it goes on and on. Sometimes, if I was working in a club, he'd come and he'd bring a musician friend or something, and they'd come in and they'd jam with me. So I got to play with him a lot, um, but always uh, impromptu, never a concert situation. It was my dream that one day I would work with musicians that my father worked with and have a band 
or, or do some writing for um, all these great musicians and hear my music back, played back by all these musicians that were the very best. But that was, that was just a dream you know, of mine and it never really happened. And little by little, it started to change. I got into, um, now into the jingle field. We're writing in a, uh, jingles and what they call underscores for, for commercials. Tonight could be the night for you. Tonight could be the night for me. Finally now I'm starting to write for this level of musician and on occasion my, we'd have trombone and I get to, to work with my dad. I, I wrote some music, some jazz music. I hired the very best musicians and paid them all except for my dad. And he was already living here in Florida. So he flew up now for the recording session and I did a record and I called it Just a Dream. And basically it was, it was, a, it was a dream fulfilled in that I got a chance to do what I had wanted to do all my life, which was write for these great musicians including my dad, be in the recording studio and hear it back. That kind of was the basis for the Just a Dream concert. And if you can't be with the world you love, then all you got to do is We had a wonderful relationship. He was so patient, so patient and kind with me. Um, I did not want to buckle down. Um, I enjoyed the music, uh, but the idea of practicing was, was um, I even thought one day that I would actually record, uh, when I was practicing the trumpet, um, record half my lesson and, um, and then play it back so that I wouldn't have to play it, but of course, um, uh, they heard from upstairs, uh, um, what are you doing? <laughs> of the band idea for uh, documenting this was basically happened at the same time as the idea of putting the concert together. I knew how much was going to be involved in doing it and to take it from making phone calls to introducing myself to different musicians and finding out who they were um, to the point where we take bows on stage. Uh, I knew there was a lot, a lot of stuff in between. So I wanted to document that. I thought it would, would be good um, for posterity. It would be an interesting uh, concept and it threw me right out of bed. And I started uh, um, working the idea out right then and there. Get lost in your rock and roll and drift away. Both ideas took hold that morning and I started it immediately. And playing at the top and usually an octave above everybody else, he's got to get up on a chair. So stand up when I talk to you. <laughs> Mr. Teddy Millett. I called my friend Teddy Millett, the trumpet player, because I had just worked with him with Blood, Sweat, and Tears. He's been with the band forever, and he's got a lot of road experience with them. Not to mention being with Gloria Estefan in Miami Sound Machine since the inception. Um, so I meet him at the hotel, and I think he said, um, I said, hi, I'm Tommy Mitchell, and he said, do you know if the bar's open? And uh, 
because uh, I got to get a pack of cigarettes. And, and I was like, it's good to be around musicians again. Let it go, Teddy! I just want to celebrate another day of living. I just want to celebrate another day of life.